Hello, my name's Sila. I'm an Ambassador Girl Scout, and today I'm going to be talking to you a bit about my Gold Award, specifically the impact of my project, what the Gold Award is, and what I've learned from completing and working on my Gold Award. And this is for anyone who's interested in what, knowing what a Gold Award exactly is, or if you're currently working on yours right now, then hopefully this video helps you out. So, let's start with what is a gold award okay awesome so a gold award is the highest award in girl scouts specifically in the united states that um a girl scout who's a senior and amb an ambassador can earn it focuses on developing your skills uh becoming a good leader so implementing leadership um serving your community or a community and then exploring different career options and that kind of stuff so it's a really good opportunity to do to grow as a person and as a leader i think so yeah and your gold award the gold award essentially is going to have an impact on a community that hopefully if you're completing your gold award that you care about so the actual project or the gold award take action project um, let me tell you a bit about that. So, the main goal of the Take Action Project is to identify some community needs that exist, um, figure out, be resourceful and figure out a solution to these problems or needs, um, and then advocating for yourself and others. Another thing is that you want to be inspired to do something about this new issue you've uncovered or if it's an old issue but you want to be inspired to do something about it and help find a solution and hopefully you feel empowered while doing so um, yeah so let's talk about the requirements for this take action project I'll give a summary and then we'll get into the seven steps that you go through while you're completing your take action project so the main requirements are that you have to identify the main or one of the root causes root causes of the issue you're going to be doing your project on or that you're advocating for so um, one thing I suggest you do is first of all if you don't have an issue dead set then that's fine just go ahead and like think about the things that you care about or that seem to be prevalent issues within your community and then what you can do from there once you have those in your brain or on a piece of paper you can go ahead and do this, um, figure out, do some research, and also figure out the main, what causes those issues, or what creates those needs in the community that you're going to be working with for your project, okay? So, once you have those, you're going you're to also want to figure out how you can help, and if you can involve some community partners. So, you can't do this by yourself. So you're going to need to get help from an organization um, so you can understand the issue a bit better. So that's also some research, but you can also figure out from a perspe another person's perspective what the best way to help would be. Okay, so identify your root cause and figure out how you can involve some community partners or an organization within your community, essentially. And then another requirement is that you have to figure out the long-term benefits of your project so when you complete your project what is going to be what are going to be the benefits or the good things the positive things that come out of you completing and doing your project okay and then the last aspect is that the take action project needs to be sustainable in some sort of way and it needs to be measurable so we're going to get into that a little bit later on in the video Okay, cool. Okay, so we're gonna go through together the seven steps that it takes to complete or successfully complete your gold award. And throughout this, I'm gonna try and give some examples from my gold award so that you have something to reference or so you can better understand these requirements and steps. So step number one, like I mentioned earlier, choose an issue. So choose an 
something, a cause or an issue that impacts you or inspires you to do something about it within your community. Um, ask yourself a question like, what am I passionate about? What do I really care about? What do I want to do something about? So, um, yeah, so an example for m my project is the, unfortunately, the amount of violence that's exhibited against women around the world was a concern for me, and it is, it, it happens to a lot of young women, specifically in this country, and I felt, and in, a, in my community in general, and I felt like I needed to do something about it. I care about people feeling safe and having personal safety and maintaining that. So next part of choosing an issue is figuring out, okay, I know what I'm passionate about, but how can I contribute? What skills do I have that I can use to help solve some of this problem or just contribute to finding a solution for this problem, right? So if you're great at producing videos and making YouTube videos, then maybe you can create a series of videos that educate people a bit about your pro your issue for part of your project. You never know. Or, yeah, just that's an example. Now for me, in my project, what I did is I have a martial arts background. So in order to contribute to personal safety and self-defense and decreasing violence, among the young women in my community, I thought, okay, well, I can give people the information and my knowledge of self-defense techniques and just other information on how to stay safe. So that's an example of some skills. So my martial arts skills that I've learned over the years were what I wanted to contribute. And then another question you have to ask yourself is, can I get help from someone? So whether this means a community partner or someone, it could be someone you know that has experience dealing with the issue you're, passion you're gonna be working on and contributing to. So, uh, for example, for me initially, I thought of my martial arts instructor, my sensei, and I thought she would be a great person to help me understand this issue and what I could do to help fix it. And then, the last question you have to ask yourself is how can I make a difference, right? So specifically for me, we're going to talk about how I felt like the best way for me to make a difference was to provide other people my age, other young women, with the information and techniques to and resources to defend themselves, whether that was self-defense techniques, information about um, human trafficking or information about the forensic exam that occurs if unfortunately someone does experience sexual assault. Um, so I wanted to provide people with information and resources to and skills hopefully to combat to maintain their personal safety. Um, yeah. So once again the biggest point here is that you want to make sure you know you're passionate about your issue and that you can find people to help you or a community partner to help you better understand your issue and tell you the best way or give you some insight into the best way that you can help um, contribute to the solution, okay? What can you do to help is what you're going to ask them. Uh, okay, now Step number two, you figured out your issue. Great, you know what you're going to be doing. But now you have to figure out the root causes of your issue. So we talked about this a little bit earlier, but essentially it's exactly how it sounds. You gotta, you're going to have to do some research on the issue you're going to be creating your project around. And you have to figure out why is this happening? What can I do to stop it? But you have to figure out what is causing it and find those causes that you and your community partner can address. So, example for me, I felt like I did some research and I found that people who, women, young women and women in general who were experiencing violence such as sexual assault or human trafficking, um, they were, I found a lot from, my, from a lot of my research that the main things were that they didn't really have the information or know what to do in the event of 
sexual assault or being um, in a situation where they're experiencing human trafficking. So the main thing was just not, one thing was not having the information. And then the second thing was that they didn't have the resources to get out of a bad situation. Or, so those two things were what I wanted to focus on. I wanted to make sure people knew what to look out for and how to avoid it and that. But also I wanted to give them some resources. So whether that was um, some presentations or slideshows with some good information from professionals, then yeah. Or um, just other things that would provide them with the information they needed to stay safe and just create a feeling of knowing that they can keep themselves protected whenever they need to. Okay? Cool. Okay. Now, step number three. So, you know your issue, you figured out a root cause for your issue and what you can address. Now you have to create a team or get help is what you can also call it. So another big part of your gold award is that you're going to be experiencing growth as a leader. You're going to have to grow. You're going to have leadership experience. It's going to be a leadership project. So you have to figure out because you can't do it all by yourself. It's just it's not a gold award if you can't if you can do it all by yourself. So you're going to need to build a team and figure out who can help me achieve what I want to achieve, okay? Who can help me better understand my issue? Who can help me provide certain resources? Who who do I need to get in touch with to help contribute to solving this problem or addressing this cause, right? Because the more people you have on your team helping you, the larger impact your project is going to have, which is great, which is what you want. Um, so you also keep in mind um, you need help from adults too, not just your peers. I mean, definitely reach out to your peers and people that are your age, um, but you need help from your adults. And don't be afraid to ask for help, like from your troop leader, your project advisor for this project, um, and your community partner. That's what, that's what these people are there for. They're there for you and they're there to help you succeed and do better, right? Okay, now we're going to move on to step number four. So, steps one through three, you know your issue, you know the causes, and you have your team. You know who can help you, and you've reached out. And you know who these people are, and they've given you, you've done your research, and you have some knowledge about the issue or the thing you're going to address with your project. So, step four is you're going to create a plan. So, essentially, you're going to figure out what goals you want to reach, for your project and how you're going to meet them. So you're going to go, I suggest you start with your goal that you want to reach and then you just go, you plan backwards. So you go from the end to the fit, to the start. So you can figure out what needs to take place and break down each different thing that you need to do to accomplish that goal, right? So some questions you need to answer as well while creating your plan are, what is my timeline? How long is this project going to take? Do I need to raise any money to fulfill my to do my project? And then how does my issue connect to people around the world? How do I make this a global issue? How do I connect it to a global issue or cause? So for example, for me, with my project, I knew that I wanted to host some because of this is being filmed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so uh, during the pandemic, I knew that I wanted to host some sort of virtual workshop or a series of virtual workshops to just inform people and help them understand and help them learn and just educate the public or my community. So that's what I did. And then my timeline was, it ended up being about five months, um, just so I could have time to plan and get everything in order. So figure out your timeline and how long you think it's going to take. Um, you can always submit a request to change your timeline once your project is approved, but try to do your best to figure out how much time you're going to need. You'd rather, in my personal opinion, you'd rather have more time than less time than you need, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, and then me connecting my issue to the a global issue is that women, ex unfortunately, 
young women and women experience violence all over the world and that is not fair it shouldn't be a thing but it is so that's I wanted to connect my project to that right and then let's see you also need to consider sustainability and measurability for your project. So what that means is what can you what data can you collect from your project? How can you see the impact of your project through numbers specifically, right? And then sustainability is once I'm done completing my project, how can it still have an impact on people? What can I do to make sure my project is sustainable once I'm not working on it anymore? So that could be through your computer community partner or a website or social media anything like that to make sure it's sustainable okay and then just a little bit of just some notes for while you're creating your plan make sure your timeline um, meets the requirements for your specific council or your specific area I believe for all Girl Scout projects for gold award projects it's at least 80 hours that are contributed towards your project by you so make sure whatever you're planning to do that your project can meet those 80 hours or more and just make sure you're breaking up your time in a way that meets your specific requirements or um yeah what are you allowed to sp how much time are you allowed to spend in each part of your project um yeah and then once you've created your comprehensive plan of everything you're going to do and you've planned it out to the best of your ability, you're going to want to um, just check, double check, triple check that all parts of your project meet the requirements for the goal award, right? And for before you start filling out your proposal. Okay, so now you've completed steps one through four. So you figured out what you want to focus on figured out the root causes, you've created your team, and you've created your plan for how you're going to do your project. The fifth step is presenting your plan, which essentially comes out to your proposal, your project proposal, and your interview. So what you want to do once you have your plan together is you want to review your specific gold award checklist to make sure it meets the requirements, and then you're going to start transferring Hopefully you've been working on your proposal while creating the plan, but if not, you're going to go ahead and start working on your proposal on Gold Gold, the Gold Gold portal. So you're going to do that, and then once you're done with your proposal and you've gathered all the attachments and materials you need for that, you're going to go ahead and submit it to have that done. And then once you submit it, you're going to have to schedule your interview. Now, your interview is going to be essentially have the Gold Award Committee review all aspects of your proposal and what you're going to be doing. They're going to ask you questions, and they're just going to make sure everything, all the requirements for Gold Award projects are met in your proposal, and if they have any clarifying questions, you're going to go ahead and answer them there, okay? And if you need extra supplementary materials like maybe a presentation or slideshow or a visual or a graph or a chart or something if you need that go ahead and bring it with you right so you have it with you and you can show them and advice for your interview for me um, make sure you're prepared both knowing your project inside and out being able to answer any questions about it and then just make sure you're wearing whatever you need to wear I'm wearing my sash right now and some khaki pants and a white shirt. So you're gonna need to do that for your project. Just make sure you're prepared, both mentally and physically. Um, and then if all goes well with your project, then you can go ahead and get started on your take action project. Excuse me, if all goes well with your interview, you can get started on your project. Okay, so now you've presented your plan and hopefully it's been improved approved if it isn't then you maybe you need to go back and fix something or change something and go submit a proposal again that's totally fine but eventually your proposal is approved and you can get started on your project so your that takes us to step six which is take action where you actually get to do your project yay you made it um so while you're doing whatever you're doing for your project what you've proposed Make sure you communicate with your troop leader and your project advisor throughout the process. So you, if you need help, then you need to ask them for it, 
because you're responsible for that because it's your project, right? So just keep in touch with them and feel free to ask them any questions. And then also just a little detail, if you're going to be posting things of other people, participating in some sort of activity, then you're gonna, you might need to get some photo release forms or some insurance. So just make sure you know what you need for your project. Like, do you need to earn money while completing your project? How are you going to do that? Keep, keep that in mind, right? While you're working on it. And then the biggest thing is keeping track of your hours. So you know you need to have this many hours to fulfill your gold award, right? But you need, like, you don't want to be in the situation where you've done all this great work and you've completed your project, but you haven't really been keeping track of your hours. And so then you have to go back and dig through everything and try to figure out how much time you spent on what. That's not going to be fun, and you might not have time for that. So what I recommend is keeping every day you work on something, you keep track of that. You might write it down first and keep track, keep a logbook, keep a little notebook of what you're doing, and then eventually you can um, input it into the Gold Gold Portal's time log, or you can just directly input it into the time log. Whatever works for you, however you best keep track of your time, like if you were doing a right another service project, is how I like to think of it. If you, However you do that and keep the best track of your hours, make sure you do that because you do not want your hard work to not be recognized because you didn't keep track of those. So that's just some tips. And for me, with my project, is every day I did something, at the end of the day, I would log up all my hours and what I did and just, just figure out how much that was. But add those up, write those out, and then input them into the time log so I wouldn't have to worry about it later, right? And I was keeping track of everything. So let's go a little bit into what my take action project was. So what I did is first, I had to figure out, for my project, I had guest speakers to come and present at my virtual workshops over Zoom. So I had to figure out if I through my team that I had already, if I needed more people, I had to go ahead and reach out to them. And then, so I had to first figure out my guest speakers and what topics we were going to cover in the content and the format. So logistics. And, um, or if we were going to do self-defense demonstrations, how were we going to do that over Zoom? What was that going to look like? And then I had to make sure I was meeting all the requirements of my Gold Award Project Agreement, which you will hopefully have once you're done with your interview and your project gets approved. So I had to keep all those things in mind and I planned out what each workshop was gonna cover and I scheduled meetings with all of my guest speakers that were going to come and present at my workshops. And then on my end, I had to enlist some help with some social media people or someone who knows social media better than me to help me also run, but um, figure out how to use accounts and how to create posts that people would look at and so I had to figure out how to get the word out about my project and I had to reach out in fact to five nonprofit organizations or advocacy groups to spread the word about my project and figure out what I was going to do okay and as a result I had a series of five virtual workshops and I had young women my main audience was young women and I had those them come and just learn and hear from these amazing guest speakers that I was fortunate enough to have and yeah that's what I did and I kept track of my hours every day very diligently so I would not forget anything I'd done. Now after you've completed the project itself whatever you're doing and whatever take action you're doing in between step six and seven which we're going to get to in a minute you're going to want to make sure you tell people about your gold award and how that impacted your community and what a gold word even is and what you learned, which is exactly what I'm doing right now by talking to you guys. But um, yeah, you want people to know about the gold award and what you did and how you did it and all of that cool stuff so they can, you know, just appreciate your project and all the hard work you've done and so you can appreciate it as well and take some time to reflect on it too. So yeah. That's, in between, that's a bit of an in-between step, more fits into step six where you take action and before you submit your final report. Now, step number seven. Okay, at this point, 
you've taken your action, you've planned, you've done all the things you need to do, congratulations, you did it. Um, awesome, you're awesome. So, step seven, you need to educate and inspire. So I guess me telling you about my gold award fits more into step seven than step six, but that's what I'm telling you about, why I'm telling you about the gold award and what it is and what I've done. And so, essentially, once you've done all of this hard work and you've put in the time and you've made your impact on your community, you need to uh, start working on your final report, which looks like you going back to the gold gold portal and just updating any information, filling out step six and seven on there, and tell you're basically telling um, the gold award committee what you've done for your project and how you did it and what happened and all of that good stuff so they understand your impact and know what you've done. Um, yeah, so while you're working on your final report, just make sure you have all your work, all your uh, all the things you've done and all the extra. If you need any letters from people, go ahead and get those letters or um, yeah, just make sure you collect all the supplementary materials that go along with your project and your proposal and um, your final report. And then once you submit that final report, you're going to schedule your exit interview. So it's like your proposal interview, but you're going to tell the Gold Award Committee what happened and what you did and how you did it. Um, and you're going to answer any questions they may have. And you're just, they're just there to make sure the agreement for your Gold Award is met. And after that, hopefully, you've earned your gold award. So congratulations. Yeah, you're awesome. You did a great job. You put in a lot of hard work to get to this point. So congrats. And those are all seven steps of how to do your take action project for your gold award. So now that we've gone over all seven steps and explain what a gold award is, I'm going to talk briefly if I haven't, I've already mentioned some things from my project in here, but I'm going to talk briefly about what my gold award was and what I did for it and the impact it had on my community, right? So my gold award project called Girl Sense focused on teaching st um, self-defense to young women, so middle age and high school age girls within my community or just in general, th that was who I wanted to reach out to and impact. and. I taught them about self-defense through virtual workshops because unfortunately we're in the pandemic so I had to have these virtually and I just taught them so the topics we covered were um, first we covered the role of a sane nurse because a lot of people don't know what that is so on this channel if you want to know what a sane nurse is go ahead and check out my first workshop recording and you'll find out but um, yeah we covered that we also covered the forensic exam, what that is, what that looks like, because unfortunately, many women have to go through that, so people should know about it. Number three, we covered self-defense. So specifically, we covered self-defense techniques and awareness and avoiding dangerous situations. So we covered how to de-escalate a situation or how to avoid physical violence or contact with a potential... Um, I don't want to say assailant, so maybe attacker um, or someone that's trying to bring harm to them is what we did. And then we went into self-defense techniques so that if you are in a position where you need to physically defend yourself, then you know and have the tools to do so. And some techniques you can have in the back of your, in your back pocket to um, use if necessary. And we also covered issues the issue uh, briefly of human trafficking and what that looks like and how to avoid it as well as just any other dangerous situation just being aware of your surroundings and knowing what to look out for is essentially what those workshops covered and we did some interviewing interactive activities such as doing hosting self-defense classes and we I also did um, how do I explain this we did an activity where actually um, participants went through their bags, their purses, and they learned about different items in their purses, everyday items that they could use to defend themselves if necessary, right? So the impact my project had is uh, the young women who participated or read any of the information I posted 
they learned how to protect themselves and how to feel safe when they're on their own or just know that they have the tools and resources at their disposal to, f- to learn more about how to be safer and just maintaining their personal safety in space. So just feeling a bit better, whether it's like just walking alone at night or um, if you are in a situation where you need to physically protect yourself. Um, and now we're going to transition to what I learned from completing my gold award. I would say that I learned a ton about professional communication, so whether that's sending emails out to people to promote an event, or that's just um, sending out emails to ask for support about your project and stuff like that, I learned how to communicate with guest presenters, professionals, all that good stuff and how to promote something. So I got a crash course in social media at the same time while doing this project. Even though I'm a teenager, I know, but um, I'm... I learned how to use social media. And then I also learned how to improve as a leader, which was mainly just delegating and asking for help because I needed to figure out how to trust people to help me and to just let them do some of the work or tell them how to do some of the work and also, and have it culminate and not micromanage everything, essentially. Because that's what leading is. You have to let people do their thing and you can't micromanage everything. Yeah, so that also ties into collaboration. I learned how to collaborate with people on short notice or if I'd known them for a while, but how to collaborate with them and create some good workshop programs that people would enjoy being at. And also, oh my gosh, the biggest thing I learned was adapting to change because I had instances where um, a presenter did not work out or some content we were going to do was not... It wasn't going to fit, or we just couldn't include everything, so I had to figure out how to roll with the punches, specifically logistics as well, if someone, like, figuring out scheduling and timing and just availability for everyone who came, which I'm grateful for, but it was just a lot of adapting to a new situation and figuring out how to go from there, because when you do your project, there will be some bumps in the road, and you have to figure out how to address those, which is part of the experience. So overall, I'd say completing my gold award has made me a better person and a better leader. I've become more confident in my ability to host something or just be in charge of a group of people because I know I'm capable of it. And I'm grateful to have had this opportunity to do that and prove that. And yeah, um, it's your gold award is definitely hard work but it's wor- it's good hard work and it's worth it in the end. And I think it's a great learning experience for anyone who's up to the challenge. Um, and if you are working on your gold award, that's awesome. And just keep going. If you completed it, congratulations. You're pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, with that, thank you. And I hope this gave you some insight into the gold award and what it is. Yeah, thank you. Have a good rest of your day.